Hi guys, welcome back to TOEFL with Yuva. In this lesson, I show you how to write a TOEFL independent writing essay for an agree disagree question. The question is about electronic money. I include many different ideas to help you increase your score. Let's get started. By the way, if you want to get your dream TOEFL score, join my course. Here you can find templates, practice tests, sample answers and much more to really boost your score. Also, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss the next video. First, let's have a look at the question. In the future, electronic money will completely replace all forms of coin or printed money. Do you agree or disagree? Use specific reasons and examples to support your opinion. There are many agree-disagree questions in TOEFL independent writing. You are given a statement and then asked if you agree or disagree with the answer. Neither choice is right or wrong. The TOEFL examiner wants to see how well you support an opinion, whichever opinion you choose. This question made me think a bit. I actually have no strong opinion about electronic money. I'm afraid I couldn't think of great ideas to support either view. Instead of worrying too much about which was the best side, I decided to disagree and thought about two reasons that money might still exist in the world. Here's how I start my essay. I disagree that there will someday no longer be any cash, only electronic payments. I feel this way for two reasons that I will examine in this essay. I am starting with two sentences from my template. I think templates are great because they give you great sentence starters. You can structure your essay well with a template and save time to think about your reasons. I also am careful to change the wording of the question. Paraphrasing boosts your score because it shows you have a great vocabulary. I changed in the future to someday and all forms of coin or printed money became cash. I also turned electronic money into electronic payments. But do you notice that the order of the ideas is different too? Someday is in the middle of the sentence and electronic payments move to the end. Changing the order shows that I'm good at grammar as well as vocabulary. Now I will talk about the first paragraph. I always put the main points into separate paragraphs and I indent the first line. First, some people do not like electronic accounting methods. This is a simple sentence, but it gives my main idea. First starts the paragraph well, so you know it's one of the two reasons I talked about in the last sentence. The next sentence gives more detail to support that general statement. For instance, my brother's wallet was stolen last year. For instance, is an awesome linking word because it shows that I'm giving an example. I made the sentence short too because I wanted to make it stand out. However, I realize it doesn't actually show what I mean. It just starts the story. Here's what I wrote next. The robber used the credit cards to make huge purchases and it took many months for my brother to straighten out the problem and refund most, but not all, of his money. 
This is a longer sentence to create a good balance of long and short. To be honest, this was two smaller sentences when I first wrote the essay. When I proofread it, I realized there were many short sentences in a row and it was rather boring to read. I didn't have a lot of time left, so I joined the two ideas with AND. Changing details like this can boost your score, so it really is important to proofread when you are done writing. On to the next sentence. I don't want to get off the point of my essay by writing too much about my brother, so I now say how that example relates to my main idea. Now my brother only carries cash with him and there are many people who feel the same. See guys what I did here. I relate my brother's situation to my claim that some people don't want to use electronic money. But I don't stop there. Next, I say that the case is not limited to my brother. I say other people feel like he does. That claim acts as the transition for my next sentence. Yet other people prefer cash to avoid overspending, as it is easy to lose track of the totals when using electronic payments. I decided that it might be good to show that people don't like to carry cash for different reasons. Yet other people links really well with the many people in the previous sentence and it introduces the next reason smoothly. I wasn't sure if the idea of overspending made sense to everyone. I mean, you can overspend with cash, right? I used the linking word as to add the reason that it is easier to prevent overspending. With electronic spending, you don't always see the total amount you spend. Probably that idea is enough, but I wanted to clarify why cash is better. Such people manage finances more easily. Using money they can hold to monitor how much remains. Here I give the reason. The people can monitor or see how much cash is remaining. I'd like to point out two more details in this sentence which make it really awesome. One is the subject, such people. Such links the idea to the people who prefer using cash to avoid overspending. That is really a long phrase to repeat, isn't it? I could just say they, but at first glance it might refer to electronic payments. Such is a great word to turn a general noun into a specific one that refers to a group you already mentioned earlier. The other detail about this sentence is monitor how much remains. That's complex grammar too. I could say monitor the amount that remains. How makes it more of a question, like you're curious about the amount that is left. But what comes after how? I mean, haven't you heard how many too? Much is used for general amounts that aren't countable and many is used for nouns that you can count. Amount is not countable because it is a general idea. Therefore, I used how much. Details like this really show off your understanding of grammar. By the way, if you want to get your dream TOEFL score, join my course. Here you can find templates, practice tests, sample answers and much more to really boost your score. Also, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss the next video. 
At this point, I have given enough examples, so I move on to the concluding sentence in the paragraph. Therefore, I feel that cash will continue to be used by people who prefer to use it. Therefore is a linking word to show you are giving the conclusion to an argument. So it's good for the last sentence of a paragraph. I just repeated my main idea in the paragraph. I tied the ideas of the different kinds of people all into one common group. People who prefer to use cash. I will now start the next idea in a new paragraph. Furthermore, cash drives an important portion of the economy. Furthermore is used to add another idea on the same topic. So shows I'm giving my next reason why electronic money will not replace cash. If you know what I mean by that sentence, I'm impressed. It sounds good because it has strong vocabulary, but it doesn't really explain how cash helps out. I've got to explain better in the next sentence. When people today have a few extra coins, they're willing to help others. When is a time clause? It qualifies the fact that people are willing to help others. It restricts the idea of being helpful to only the time when people have a few extra coins. I've made a big claim here, but it sure supports my idea that coins are necessary and that electronic money can't take its place. Imagine a world where people are not willing to help each other. After a claim like that, I need to be careful not to be too extreme. I start explaining in more detail in the next sentence. To be specific, many charities rely on donations. I use the transition to be specific, to show that I'm clarifying my claim. In this case, I give a short, definitely true idea. I do that on purpose. I want the reader to agree with me and know I'm still speaking in a logical way. I'm going to add one more sentence to make sure the reader knows I am not just talking wildly. I admit that it is possible to make a large electronic transfer to a charity, but many people do not want to go to the time and effort. I start with I admit to show that I realize that there is another viewpoint. People can make donations without cash. But is a linking word that shows contrast. It's really useful because it then shows that despite that other viewpoint, I still have a reason for believing money is important. My reason is that people do not want to put time and effort into making a money transfer to a charity. Now I give my main supporting point for this paragraph. Yet those same people are willing to put the change left over after grocery shopping into a donation jar on the counter. Do you see what I've done? I could have said that some people are willing to put change into a donation jar. The reader could then respond that people who donate now will always donate and people who don't donate now will never donate. The reader will say that the action is based on personality, not availability of coins and paper money. So I used those same people to show that there is a very serious difference between having coins and not having coins. The people who donate with cash are the same people as the ones who will not donate using electronic systems. Those same people really makes a difference in this sentence, doesn't it? 
Now I will emphasize why those cash donations are important. Those small offerings add up to a significant portion of the operating expenses of some charities. And that source of income would dry up if there were no more coins to spontaneously drop into collection boxes. Again, I've added a longer sentence. That's because I wanted to give a lot of detail, but not focus on this one sentence. Complex sentence structures can really change the flow of a paragraph and move the idea along. I used a few fancy words here too. Significant portion sounds better than a lot. And dry up is an idiom a lot of native speakers use. Spontaneously is a really long word that sure makes my vocabulary shine too. On to the concluding sentence in the paragraph. Therefore, cash is necessary to continue certain spending habits that enrich our society. I used therefore again, but that is okay. It reinforces the parallel structure of the paragraphs. Then I give the summary of the paragraph. We must have cash so we can keep making donations. Here I change donations to spending habits to stress how important such actions are. I said that they enrich our society. I imply the opposite. We couldn't possibly change to electronic money and harm society, could we? It's time for the conclusion. I like using a template to end my essays because sometimes I'm running low on time. I want to end with a strong structure and vocabulary. Here it is. I put the conclusion in another paragraph. I always try to restate the original question in the conclusion. In conclusion, Electronic money may become more prevalent, but I do not think that cash will ever be completely replaced. I admit that there may be more electronic money in the future as it may turn more prevalent or common. That may show doubt though. That doubt about electronic money reinforces my idea that cash will still exist. The final sentence is also based on a template. I feel this way because some people prefer using money they can hold and because coins are the backbone of donations that contribute to a better world. I just give the two reasons for holding my belief. You will see I again reinforced the importance of coins in that second reason. Coins contribute to a better world. After reading that, how can the reader doubt that coins should not be completely replaced? Some people write the conclusion quickly. However, a good conclusion really shows off your skills. Do you see how my choice of words ended on a really strong idea? Carefully writing the conclusion helps boost your score. But there is still one more step. Be sure to use the remaining time to look for any errors in spelling or grammar. Make sure examples are clear and are joined with good linking words. Further, look for ways to paraphrase words or improve your vocabulary. These are essential steps for a high TOEFL writing score. That's it! That's the steps I took to complete this Agree-Disagree essay. I've included many ways to improve your score. By the way, if you want to get your dream TOEFL score, join my course. Here you can find templates, practice tests, sample answers and much more to really boost your score. Also, 
hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss the next video.